Hi, Meg Hogan here. We're going to be talking about lowering the risk. How does one lower the risk on deals and purchases? The idea to utilize other people's money and other people's time, not your own. On property deals, instead of paying a huge 20 to 30% deposit from your funds, you may be able to work on a vendor finance deal that has the owner cover some of the deposit um, or even all of the deposit. A signed lease and agreement date and a few years that the loan could be sorted by. By this time, the property may have grown in equity, enough to cover the deposit amount and the loan legal fees. And then banks can simply utilise this equity as the deposit. They can see that you've made regular rent repayments to the seller and grant the loan for the balance. There's been no out-of-pocket expenses except for minor insurances, etc. Maybe one can make good on a purchased property, have another family that's unable to get a loan. And these are not bad people. These just might be people that, you know, have a family business and don't quite come into the loan structure. It's very difficult sometimes to meet the criteria um, by not knowing how much you're going to earn in a year and so forth. So maybe the, you could actually have rented out to these particular people where they agree to pay the rent and something towards the loan each year that's higher than your negotiated loan repayments. And you're creating a little bit of cash flow there. And, but you've got to have a clause in place that the funds revert back to you if the property is seized or defaulted. Purchasing some different goods on a 0% interest-free deal where your intention is to package them together and resell the items at a higher package price. Thus, you pay out the loan early, you sell, and there was no out-of-pocket expenses when you made the profit. Same can be done for flipping property on new land subdivisions. You might sign the deal that says, you know, you have two years to settle the clause. You've paid a small holding deposit to the land sales office. You win by seeing that the property's value increases to cover the deposit if you're wanting to keep it. Or if you're going to actually flip it, which is sell, resell it again, you can actually sell it before it actually asks for the money and you've recouped the money straight away on that for a higher value. Or you might want to resell the block with maybe a proposed house on it for a certain higher dollar value and have it settled prior to your contract coming due. No loss, limited risk, and um, utilising other people's time on money. CFDs, it's a stock option. Playing the stock market, it's got to be easier where you can now lease another person's shares. Paying small amounts for the view of big payouts and the stops that now you can control whether the market rises, falls or goes sideways. You can limit your exposure to risk by a low lease price and select a medium risk of exposure. As a small time developer, you can actually option a block. You sign an agreement for the time it takes to develop the block, um, you know, 12 months, 24 months, whatever. You pay a $1,000 deposit uh, on the land and they get a share in the profits or a better market price. Here, the developer can get a DA, which is a development application in place for many blocks or units on the block um, to raise its land, to raise the value of the land. The option agreement would still be applicable to the new owner that's just um, taken on the contract for, to actually develop that block. This is known as a short option. For a long option, the developer would actually be looking at being responsible for completing the development to the end sales and you'd be looking at making more pre-sales on the proposed development prior to building, completing them in stages and working on many of the exit strategies just in case money gets tight, utilising other mezzanine funds rather than bank loans or having distributed profits between joint venture partners over their money invested. Whatever the strategy you do, you need to always look at how to eliminate um, the amount of money where you invest in a deal to not negatively affect your asset pool is the name of the game.